the river overflow. It will not lead to uh, loss of lives and property. Uh, most especially our fish or ribu farmers, most of them used to farm beside the river courses. We are warning them that for now they should desist from that. Because when we have uh, too much rain, the fishes will be carried away. Whatever they plant will be taken away by flooding. We don't want them to uh, infect so much and lose everything. As the rainy season gradually approaches, perhaps this serves as a reminder to other states predicted to experience above normal rainfall, such as Sukutu, Zamfara, Nainja, Kwara and Adamawa states, to take similar proactive measures to reduce the impact. Staying on in Algeria, the senior special assistant to the president on foreign affairs and diaspora, Mrs. Abike Dabiririwa, has urged Nigerians in India to remain calm and be watchful of their surroundings. This follows the renewed attacks on Nigerian students in India. While condemning the mob action as unwarranted and deplorable, Mrs. the SSA noted that the Indian authorities currently have five suspects in custody. She also spoke exclusively to channels television on what the Nigerian government is doing to combat the incessant attacks. To have an awareness campaign which has started immediately to let Indians know that they cannot turn to the Republic at this time. The Nigerian government is also working. This office is working with our students association in India. We are in touch with the President of Kennedy and uh, we are interacting with them so that if anything happens, we get to know immediately and uh, we lost. We have three patients in hospital. They are responding to, to treatment. The Shahid uh, has been doing them. So what we can say at this point in time is that India has said it's not going to happen again. India has said uh, it's going to protect our, our students in India. So we want to take that for their work. But we are demanding that they prosecute those that are found guilty of this offense immediately. <laughs> a Kenyan lady was attacked again yesterday. She was walking alone and she was attacked. And uh, so we need to threaten that those who committed this crime will be criminalized. While we continue to talk to our citizens, you know, still be calm, go about their normal duties, walk in groups, walk alone, and ensure their communication with one another and with the high profession in India. The Nigerian government will definitely come with its citizens being treated, being killed, or being manhandled, being attacked anywhere in the world. The Indian High Commissioner has been summoned, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, they immediately took action, so did our Shazay in India. So we give benefit of the doubt. But if this continues to happen, we cannot guarantee that we'll keep this quiet. And we cannot guarantee that our, that our own uh, families who are students in India will be that quiet. So we want to hold India responsible and accountable to their work, and hopefully this will not happen again. India has to get out there and stop xenophobic attacks against Africans in India. Like they say, if you commit a crime, be punished for it. But not when you are just walking about in the mall and you are attacked from nowhere. We don't accept it. We protect our, our visitors in Nigeria. We protect foreigners in Nigeria. We believe that we deserve the same wherever we find ourselves anywhere in the world. The senior special assistant to the president on foreign affairs and diaspora, Mrs. Abike Dabiri Iroa. Four years after it was blown up by the Boko Haram sect, the Katako Bridge, a major infrastructure in Gujba local government area that connects Yobe State to its northeast neighbors, has been reopened. The bridge, which lies 22 kilometers away from Damaturu, the state capital, was used as a link to the strongholds of the insurgents. Yobe State Governor Ibrahim Gaydam reopened reopen the bridge, emphasizing its economic importance to the region. With the return of peace in the northeast, most locals have returned home and are already settling down. But they're faced with several challenges, such as good access roads, shelter, among others. This is because during the surge of the dreaded Boko Haram insurgents, several infrastructure were destroyed. For instance, the Katako Bridge in Yobe State was blown off as a strategy to consolidate on their captured territories. Today, Governor Gaydam has come to open the reconstructed bridge and inspect Did other projects. First, the Commissioner for Works and Transport gives a breakdown of the level of work at the Damaturu Magza Road, which he says is 50% completed. This bridge was, uh, was completed long ago, Your Excellency, but. Uh, it was not open to the public for usage. 
because we are anticipating that one day you will come and inspect it first before we allow the motorists to start enjoying it. So, Your Excellency, as you have personally come today, we hope that uh, the bridge will be put to use. Governor Gaydam is impressed and promises to construct more roads, schools and other infrastructure that will bring these communities back to life. It was in our plan to beautify Gama through Motoropolis. It has to look like a, at least a state capital. A, uh, we are going to make it a mini city before our term ends in 2019. That was where we started. And this does not mean that we would overlook some other urban cities of Potiskum, Nguru, Gedam, and Geshwa. The governor also inspects the urban road renewal project. He has started very well and doing very well. The only thing is he has to increase the speed. Because you, uh, based on the agreement you signed, uh, he has six months to complete. Three months is now over. If he speeds up, I think in the next three months he will complete the structures. The Gay Dam administration insists it will not only develop the state capital, but will extend the gesture to other major towns across the state. A luxurious safari lodge in Kenya owned by Italian-born conservationist and author Kuki Galman has been burned down by suspected cattle headers. It is the latest attack in the drought-stricken Latkipia region by suspected headers who have been invading private property in search of fresh grazing. Reports say there were no visitors staying at the Mukutan retreat at the time of the attack. It is believed that the attack may have been retaliation for a police operation. Earlier this week, police reportedly shot dead about 100 cattle in the surrounding Lakipia Nature Conservancy, which is owned by Ms. Galman. Ms. Galman, who is best known internationally for her memoir, I Dreamed of Africa, has not commented on the attack. Still to come on Network Africa. Nasri's in Uganda helped farmers revive a once thriving coffee sector. Please stay with us.